Okay, so this is our demo debate. The resolution that these guys are going to be uh, presenting to you guys today is this house believes that Disney princesses are bad role models. What is so, the resolution? A resolution is basically the topic or the thing that the people are going to be arguing about. So we have two sides to this debate as we have two different tables. We have side proposition or the team that is for the resolution. And we have side opposition or the team that is against the resolution. So there are two things that these guys are going to do for you today. One thing they're going to do is they're going to make points. So that's called construction. And the second thing they're going to do is deconstruction, or they're going to basically clash with what the other people have said. So one thing that you guys can do, because you're all going to be debating today, is look for the things or the tools that these guys are using that makes their speeches sound more persuasive. Or you like their arguments a bit more. Find out the things that make those arguments better. So first up is Matt on the side of the proposition. And he's going to do a couple things for you today. How many years has Matt been doing? Matt has been debating since great nowadays. <laughs> It's a different question than how many years yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't of value. 
are worth accomplishing because that's not what gets you remembered. That's, what not, that's not what gives you attention. That's not what makes you special. Being a princess and being beautiful is what makes you special. And I think that there's a lot more to life, especially in the 21st century for women, than just simply being beautiful and being princesses. And so it means, that's why we think, on the side proposition, that Disney princesses are about to have role models. And that's why they, they propose. Thank you very much.
So in the end, I'd just like you to remember that we need to keep the magic going, that we need to allow Disney princesses to have that magic. We need to keep this in a positive light.
produced by the negative effects. Matt said, you only want to be a princess and all you'll care about is beauty, implying that ever caring about your physical appearance is, of course, fundamentally horrible and a bad thing for anybody to do. And Dylan said, well, you'll just want men to save you all the time, plus you'll be doing too much risk taking. This is just terrible. We can't let our girls watch Disney movies. Well, I've watched almost every Disney movie, and I am a successful debater, and a good teacher, and a mom, and all those things, despite having watched Disney movies, because their whole point that just having watched the Disney movies means all the bad things influence you way more than all the goods, plus there's way too many bad things, that point doesn't actually make any sense. Yeah, Matt? You've seen every Disney movie, but Wendy, would you not agree that you are an extremely unique case? No, I think I'm just like everybody else. And the way the reason I think I'm just like everybody else is I can do what Josh said. I can watch a movie and go, that was a fictional story. Here are some things about this story that I liked. Here are some things about this story that I did not like. I will not do the things that I did not like. And I actually believe everybody in this room can do that too. I think I believe in your smarts as well as your beauty. Okay, let's talk about our major argument. Our major argument here today is that there are many, many positive things associated with Disney princesses both in who they are and what they experience, and that those things actually do outweigh the bad things suggested by the other side. So they talked about Disney princesses just sitting around and waiting for guys to save them, but they also mentioned Ariel, who makes peace between two societies, Mulan, who saves China, which according to them is not worth the risk. This is the largest civilization on the planet and one of the longest living. So this is the girl who breaks out of the societal kind of role she's supposed to be in, she saves a whole bunch of boys and helps them be much more understanding about what women really need. I mean, I think she's awesome. And if that's not a good enough woman for them, I wouldn't want to be, you know, married to either of them because I know I can live up to it. Okay, so I think there's lots of really good people who save on a big scale, or like Merida, who saves her mom because she cares about people. Even like Cinderella, who's saving and protecting rats. I mean, that might think, oh, that's unimportant, but these are people who really care about others. That's a trait I want my girls to have. Well, another one they say is, well, the Disney princesses are just kind of sitting around all the time, and all they are is beautiful. I like to think about the smart Disney princesses. So they use Belle, for example. It's all about the beauties. Belle is known for being a really good reader and really smart. Her dad's an inventor. She is somebody who's smarter than all the other characters in that movie. So clearly, that's something that's really, really important. Now they say, girls won't notice that. They'll only notice her dress. I think the whole reason they're on this side of the topic is that they need to do a little more noticing. I don't think that's about the movies. I think that's to be more specific. Okay, the next thing is they're really inventive. Think about a movie named uh, like Tangle. Brains are pretty popular right now. Now that's a girl who really knows how to use her brain. She uses it to rescue people. She uses it to climb things. She uses it as an exciting dance at accoutrement. I mean, she's really talented. When I look at somebody like that, I think, cool, you're innovative and interesting. I don't, however, think, I wish I had a brain I could scale things with because I know it's real. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is how the caring, helpful part that they're kind of saying is bad about Disney princesses, I actually think is something I'd want all people to be able to, girls and boys. And I love the fact that new Disney movies have boys and girls who are caring and helpful. And I already gave the example of Cinderella, but there are many examples like that. Uh, something like Snow White, where she goes and helps a bunch of guys who are really having some serious difficulties running their home. I mean, I think these are princesses that have many admirable traits. And we've proven they have more admirable ones than they do problems. So to talk about the first one, really, 
we had a major contention about whether distant princesses are viewed by people, people like you who watch these Disney movies, as reality, or if they are portrayed as fiction, how people understand that. Now, we on the opposition clearly showed you analysis and showed you why this is true that people see it as fiction. When we show you all the people basically who watch these Disney princesses when they're growing up, yet they still remain normal. We showed you that really we associate things like extreme beauty, princes, princesses, castles, and evil stepmothers with the magic things. We associate them with dogs, we associate us talking dogs and you know talking mice. So we see that these things get left with me. So we on the opposition side clearly supported that argument. On the government side today, they simply really had this unrational fear that we are going to be hugely influenced. They really didn't show us why we're going to be hugely influenced, why we're too unintelligent to be able to figure out the differences, what things are good, what things are bad. So we really didn't see that argument supported in any way. Now the second thing, we had another major contention, the other issue in this debate was talking about are there more positive traits in Disney princesses or are there more negative traits? Now, really, the negative traits that we heard talked about were that Disney princesses were both, at the same time, too risk-taking. Like, they take too many risks, and they were too reliant at the same time. How is that supposed to be even possible? That's a huge contradiction. You can't take too many risks and be too reliant on somebody else at the same time. Besides, in the real world, we need to see women taking risks. We need to see them, um, like, not really being reliant. We need to see them, like, taking steps to unite countries, to save countries like China and Mulan. You see, Mrs. James talked to you about many different case studies. She brought up lots of evidence showing these. Really, the examples brought up by the government side only serve to contradict each other and knock each other down. So because we won on the idea of reality versus fiction, and because we won on the idea of positive versus negative traits, side opposition stands proud to oppose this way. Before I start with this debate and explain my proposition is fundamentally one that debate today, I'm going to do a little bit of direct uh, refutation of what Lenny brought up. I'm not going to disagree with any of the ad hominem attacks she made, because I'll agree that Dylan and I are pretty awful people. <laughs> <laughs> what I will argue with is this assertion that just because she can list off a bunch of neat characteristics about Disney princesses, that that's somehow more positive benefits about Disney female characteristics than there are, you know, or than, than the bad influences. But more specifically, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, going to explain why each of the examples that she gave doesn't make sense within the context of movies. She says Mulan is awesome. She leads an army and saves China. And then she goes home to be a housewife. A great, great ambition for a woman who just saved China. She says Belle is smart and is ridiculed throughout the movie for being unique and distinct from the town because she's smart instead of accentuating her beauty like the townspeople expect of her. And she talks about Rapunzel's hair. Rapunzel's hair is the only thing that makes her magical or special. As soon as it gets cut off, she loses her unique magical abilities and her properties. She loses her ability to, to heal people when she loses her hair. So we think that you know, even Rapunzel ties her value very directly in a physical sense to her beauty. So what happened today? What have we seen? We think that we've seen an argument that comes down to the question of who is responsible for sort of exhibiting the concept of a good role model? We think that what we're hearing from side opposition is that, oh, no, no, it's like for us to decide. I, as a young girl, can decide what values I'm going to take away and whether this becomes a good role model for me. And we disagree with that. On side proposition, what we have said is basically Disney is the one responsible for crafting the concept of a good role model, and they're failing in that. They're giving you characters who are valued for their beauty, for their dresses, for their accomplishments of becoming princesses. If you disagree with this, then why, when you go to the Disney store, don't they sell books that Belle reads? They don't. They sell dresses that Belle wears. And so we think that Disney is definitely crafting a character, crafting a, you know, empire on the idea of these women are special because they're beautiful and they're princesses, and this idea is not being properly refuted, and that's why we beg to propose.